Hello everyone, welcome to the sixth episode of Mastering Science and Technology. Let's learn GSAT 11. GSAT 11 was launched day before yesterday and uh, it is the heaviest satellite to be ever made by India and uh, it was launched from French Guyana using Ariane 5 rocket. So let's learn have some whereabouts about GSAT 11, what are its applications and what is the peculiarity of that. So the news was GSAT 11 was launched successfully and uh, it will play a vital role in the high speed internet connectivity which is a breakthrough for the Bharatnet project uh, which has a target by 2022. We know all the criteria of Bharatnet project like 100 uh, Gbps overall uh, internet speed each and every panchayat should get high internet uninterrupted internet connectivity in all the villages and all the urban areas. This is towards the digital India, towards e-governance e-health, e-medicine, e-education, all transforming into a digital technology. So that is what uh, this GZ11 and it will play a vital role in providing broadband services across the country and will also be acting as a platform to demonstrate new generation applications. Everything digital applications, digital entrepreneurship, digital skill development and all the things. So we, it's a holistic process, Paratnet project and this GZ11 is an impetus to that. So it is a further impetus to Bharatnet project. About the GSAT 11, speaking about this is the heaviest satellite to be ever made by Indian Space Research Organization and it is indigenously built, it is the heaviest, largest and most powerful satellite to be built by India. It is the third in a series of four satellites in total uh, aimed at achieving this ambitious project of uh, a target of 100 Gbps high data connectivity across the country under digital India mission. So what all are the four satellites? Earlier we had launched GSAT 19 and the recent November 14th we have launched GSAT 29. Uh, so one GSAT 19 then GSAT 29. This is the third one that is GSAT 11. GSAT 20 which is the fourth one that is that will be launched in 2020. So these are the four satellites which will provide high speed internet that connectivity target by 2022. And uh, this satellite is having a life of 15 years you will see in the next slide and uh, others being previously that is 19 and uh, 29 and this at 20 will be the fourth in the series which will be launched by uh, 2020 maybe in the next year in the first quarter first half of the next year. Uh, the satellite is weighing 5854 that is the first time we are launching launching something which is above 510 class normally this at 29 which was the uh, heaviest at that time in that launch in the previous month that was something like 3,000, 3.8 tons and this is 5.8 ton category and uh, GSAT, GSLB Mark 3 uh, which is the power like Bahubali of uh, Bahubali rocket of India, ISRO uh, should have been employed for this launching but the thing is we are not yet ready to launch more than 4 ton class so GSAT 29 being 3.8 uh, 3 ton or something like that it was easy to launch that but we are not yet ready for uh, launching something which is above 4.5 to 5 tons. So this is again nearly 6 tons is there and we are not ready because if that mission becomes unsuccessful then that will be heavy loss for us. So we are you know cautiously, precautiously and making a uh, step by step movement towards successfully launching a more heavier satellite. So this one was launched uh, from French Guyana that is a trusted partner of India's like uh, the launching partner it is under European Space Agency and French Guyana that is located in the tropical region. It is a small island, Kauru Island, Kauru Island of French Guyana that is where uh, this Ariane 5 rocket, Ariane 5 is a rocket just like this DSLV Mark 3 which is highly powerful. And this is a next generation high throughput communication satellite. High throughput we will see that in the next slide I will explain that high body high thru throughput. The life is more than 15 years that is a design life. Uh, normally a satellite will live more than that. This is the expected one 15 years it should have but uh, most of the satellites work beyond that 15 or 20 years or something and it will be initially it was initially placed in the geostationary transit orbit that is where uh, that is also called GTO uh, all the communication satellites will be launched first in the GTO then after few days it will automatically uh, go into the geosynchronous or geostationary orbit wherever it is requirement and uh, this will be again after two, two to three days it will be you know, placed in geostationary orbit so this is Geostationary orbit, unlike uh, GSAT 29, which was in geosynchronous orbit, the difference between both you, you probably know that. And again, as I said, it was launched by Ariane 5 rocket from French Guyana, and along with a Korean uh, satellite was also there. 
applications of gsite 11 as we told it will it is to the aim the main aim is to provide high data connectivity to user across india uh, gsite 29 we have seen it was main ma it was majorly concentrated in giving high indian data but major areas was concentrated uh, in jammu kashmir and northeast areas but this one is holistically uh, you know covering the entire span of indian geographical area broadband connectivity to gram panchayats under the bharat net project support high data rate applications uh, for enterprise network and consumer broadband application. So, business, uh, homes, consumers, government organizations, panjayat, governance, entire all the sectors will be covered under this. Not only just business applications, not only just organization, but individual consumers just like us, uh, rural households, rural panjayats, education institutions, everything will be covered under this, uh, high, uh, the applications of uh, GZ level. Now, what is high throughput satellite, HTS, high throughput satellite also called HTS is a separate class of communication satellites which is coming under the communication satellites which will provide at least twice the results in the same amount of allocated orbital spectrum thus significantly reducing the cost. So normally every satellite will be having certain spectrum, spectrum means certain frequency ranges in which it will be operating. So if you are tuning to that particular satellite frequency then we can use the particular satellite resources. Now in this particular satellites, high throughput satellites. A spectrum will be obviously provided to each and every satellite in that particular sector spectrum it will give twice the data uh, compared to the normal satellite so that is what it will reduce the cost of the satellite making the cost making making of that satellite as well as operating that satellite uh, to you know it will more, more to about half of the normal one so that is what that is and this have been in the game change this have been game, game changes in the west so we are also adopting that now the previously launched gsat 19 GSAT 29, GSAT 11, the, the recently one and the next to be launched uh, GSAT 20. All these are coming under throughput satellites. So, this, these are the examples 19, 11 and 20 are few examples for high throughput satellites. So, uh, that is all about this GSAT 11 just having a uh, recap of this. This is the heaviest, most powerful and the largest satellite to be built in, in area wise, volume wise as well as the in, in weight also it is the, is the highest one to be made in India and this is not launched in India it was launched from French Guyana using Arian 5 rocket and the importance of this this is the third in the series of four satellites uh, to provide which is exclusively dedicated on providing high internet connectivity to villages, panjaits, entire India and this is under Digital India, Digital India project uh, particularly speaking Bharat Net project and uh, all these details you have to uh, should come in mind and about high throughput satellites it, it will give twice the resources twice the datas in a given particular spectrum other than uh, compared to other satellites this is the difference so that's for, for that's all for this session uh, have a nice day thank you